Yetzka and Klaas Dreyer were full of hope and vision for a bright future when they married in 1939 in Friesland, a region to the north of the Netherlands. Just a year before the German invasion, little did the young couple suspect that they were to take an integral role in rescuing a number of Jews. Among them, a four-year-old girl named Elsha and an adolescent boy named Joseph de Haan. After the fall of Amsterdam to the might of the Third Reich in a matter of five days, Joseph took cover in his neighbor's apartment. After several days, two men appeared from the Dutch underground. With his false ID card identifying him as Willem Walfus, Joseph decided to follow the men to Friesland, where he found refuge with a farmer. Joseph's feeling of safety was soon to end, however. Early one morning, the Germans struck, like thieves in the night. They came in their trucks, rolling along the small country roads with their headlights switched off. I woke up from the loud knocking on the, on the window and from the sound of the voices, I realized that the Germans were in the little village of Genem and I must get out quick. I rushed out of the back, back door into the darkness. Taking flight, Joseph ran as far as he could in the complete darkness that shrouded the night like a thick fog. Joseph soon met Appy Reichsman, another Jewish boy who escaped the roundup. Soon afterward, the boys were approached by Klaus Dreyer, who had become a prominent figure in the underground. And we stood there, not knowing really what to do, when a man approached us, and this man was Klaus Dreyer. He actually said to us that we must go to the barn, and he pointed that out far in the distance. Go to that barn, go inside, and I'll take care about some food for you, don't worry. They were involved in passing Jewish people through the farm, hiding them on the farm, and then passing them on through the neighbors, through a network of neighbors, and that my dad was responsible for doing this during the cover of darkness. I know my mom said once to me, uh, you had to do what was right. You, you didn't have the choice. You had to do what was right. After several weeks, Klaus felt it was too dangerous for the boys to stay. Everyone was talking about the boys in the barn. Eventually, Klaus took Joseph to the large farm of Jan and Marcia Rosier, situated right next to his own. The Rosiers treated Joseph as a son, providing him with food, shelter, and the companionship of a loving family. At the Rosiers, Joseph came to know Elsha the little girl he always believed to be Klaas and Jutska's child. It was only after the war that Klaas told Joseph, You know Elsie here? I said, yes, what about Elsie? He said, well, it's not my daughter. And he said, no, it's one of yours. It's, it's one of your, your people. Klaas and Jutska Dreyer raised Elsha as their own, with complete love and devotion for five years. The little girl had been delivered to the home of Klaas and Jetska by members of the underground soon after Elsha's parents had pushed her out of the slats of a train destined for the concentration camps. Many members knew that this was a Jewish girl, uh, but nobody ever spoke about it. Uh, Mom had said many times if they were found out, they would be shot immediately. There would be no recourse on that. At war's end, Klaas and Jetska learned that Elsha's parents had survived. While they were overjoyed to hear this good news, Jetska, in particular, was heartbroken to give up the girl she had grown to love as her daughter. The relationship between Elsha and Jetska remained strong, with phone calls and letters being exchanged for many years afterward. While Joseph suffered the painful loss of his father, stepmother, and brother, who perished during the Holocaust, along with over 75% of Holland's Jews. He and Elsha reaped the good fortune of knowing the brave hearts and loving kindness of righteous among the nations, Klaas and Jetska Dreyer.
at a time of great evil in Holland, at a time when the majority of people in Holland either chose to do nothing, or worse, collaborated with the Nazi occupiers, Klaas and Jeske Dreyer chose to act upon one of the most cherished values in Judaism. Their courageous acts at that time will now stand alongside the Talmud as examples of the good in humanity.